Yo, welcome to the Homeland Show. My name is Dane, and we got Rico Rolando and Liz Charles is here. All right, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe this is our seventh seven episode or sixth episode. I, I lose track of time a lot of the times. It is, Rico. It's our seventh episode. Seven, right. Ah, I got it right. Well, congratulations to <laughs> me. I need I need I needed a win. I needed a win today. So we our special guest today is Reno. Um, Reno, man, is a lot of people know Reno, but for those that don't know, you're about to get familiar with Reno. We want to thank him for coming to the Homeland Show. We got so much to discuss with him. But before we even go any further, a new segment in the show, we want to jump into entertainment news and a little bit of what's going on locally, or good news, we should say, right, Rico? Yeah. So each day, each day we will kick it off and it will be one of us, like Rico is going to take the lead today. And of course, I'll go ahead and throw some entertainment gossip in there and some good news in there. And of course, Liz is going to bring that fire too. So, Rico, <laughs> let us know what's, what's, what, what do you have on your mind, man? What's out there? What do we need to know about? Yeah, so there's so much trending topics right now, like all over the world. But um, definitely one here in Cayman is we have 200,000 testing kits that just actually arrived here on island for COVID-19. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah, everybody clap. That's amazing. Huge yeah. shout out to the oldies, to um, Susan Oldie that paid for half of those testing kits. Is that correct? Oh, half. That's, 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 that's what I heard the governor, the governor said that. Half. Oh, wow. That, that's some serious half money. Thank you, <laughs> Oldie. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> cheers to Susan. Ah. Cheers to Susan Oldie. You know, this is going to help us so much because obviously we didn't have the testing kits that were on hand at the time. And I think... Um, this should basically cover everyone on island if it's 200,000. Um, so big up to the Cayman Islands government, to the oldies for, you know, helping us through this hard time. And they've, they've always come through through island. Um, the oldies have helped tremendously as well. So big up to you guys. And, um, yes, I mean, so I will say when I heard this news, there was a part of me that was like, I mean, could they just do like an extra flight? Like just one more flight. <laughs> I can get, get a test real quick. <laughs> Anyways, I think you'd have to go to the UK first because I don't think we'll be going to New York anytime soon. Uh, yeah, I don't nah, think so. Nah, I don't think so. I'll send you a boat. <laughs> just, just ship me a testing kit. Just yeah, ship it go. to me. <laughs> we got you, Liz. <laughs> sure. And um, more news, um, Triller Festival. I don't know if you guys heard about it. I heard of it. It's called Triller Fest. Um, I actually got on um, the news like literally two hours ago that I will be one of the um, performers for Triller Fest. Yeah. That's so crazy, man. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Good news. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Nah, bro. That, that's crazy, actually. Yeah. Love the that. Love that. It's basically like a virtual Coachella festival. So, you know, Liz, you might be home in your all, you know, trailer, um, Co Coachella outfit on, you know, the, the one eye in the yes. middle, the big hat. All that. Yes. All that. I love it. I love it. I'm just going to be going down yeah. this week, Friday. Who are some Sunday. of the headliners? You know what? There's so many headliners right now. Um, I'm going to actually name you a few. So, White Clef Jean. Um, Migos, Marshmallow, Pitbull, Snoop Dogg. Uh, who else is it? Rico there? Rolando. Yeah, for real, dude. Yeah, Yo. <laughs> um, there's over like a hundred artists. There's so much artists that I, I'm just trying to name them out right now. Um, it's gonna be crazy though. G Herbal. Um, lots of you guys know him. Um, Seven Shiggy, Paris Tilton is even in there doing a what? DJ set. So it's gonna be wait. Paris it's gonna Tilton's be eating. What you guys trust me? She's got her own like virtual world right now. So what? what? She actually I didn't know she DJ. Yeah, yeah so that's her new job. Her... Yo. Yeah. <laughs> she has like her own app and stuff for that. That basically like she does like a virtual DJ set. Like, um, I think it's like once a week or something like that. But basically, like she even has like virtual security guards that will kick you out of like the concert. What? And all that stuff. It's crazy. Yo. Things next level. <laughs> things that much are crazy. That's and um, the last thing, last but not least, I know this is kind of bad news right now, but Bernie Sanders, um, Bernie Sanders, our guy, our confidant, and now he is out of the race. 
Can I can I ask a question before we get into the interview? Do anybody think that like some sort of scandal was brought against Bernie Sanders and the reason that he decided that he's stepping out? No. Uh, Liz Liz is saying no, but I really do believe how you how you gonna take out a superhero unless he has some type of closet, I'm sorry, skeleton in the closet that he's hiding and he was just afraid that the public did not no longer see a sweet old guy that could was more than capable <laughs> of running the United States and the free world. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You think seventy no, something year old Bernie Sanders <laughs> who been way. repeating the same line for the past fifty years, who has run for president how many three times at this point? You think he has skeletons in his cl- nah. Yo, I just nah. wanna say I just wanna say off the record that Liz is perhaps one of the most innocent females I've ever met in my life. But there might have been something that took place a very long time ago that yeah, no yeah, I agree. anybody to know about. What yeah, do you think? I agree with that. I agree with that. Have you seen the videos of young Bernie? Young Bernie did yeah. the same two decades ago, three decades ago, Bernie was the same a century ago talking about healthcare. There is nothing that has changed about Bernie Sanders. There are no skeletons. <laughs> Joe Biden, on the other hand. No, Joe Biden's oh, terrible. Oh. He and oh, did his I say it on the fingers TV? <laughs> that like to be touching people, he Eesh. got some skeletons. Yeah, yeah, for real. I agree so, with that. I'm a conspiracy theorist, and I don't know. I think they made a told Bernie, you know, you did this one thing at that one place at that one time. We're going to expose you, blah, blah, blah. True. You know what? There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know about as public. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm not saying anything. Cool. I'm, I'm quiet to this whole thing. I'm not. They yeah. might be listening right now. Our, our, yeah, our, true. Yeah, we should just stop you guys, talking. You guys, Bernie was going to lose anyway. And I, I like Bernie, but he was going to lose anyway. It was just a ma- not the Why? Like, final. Because Joe Biden had won more delegates in more states true. than he had. So in the, in the, like, in the Democratic race, he was already going to lose. It was just a matter of time before he conceded. So this is when he chose to do it. But having said that, as someone who is like now experienced both the U.S. healthcare system, Cayman's healthcare system, a couple different healthcare systems, the U.S. needed them some burn. Because Cayman got testing kits to cover the entire population two times over. And I'm over here like, what I got to do to get a test? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I feel you. Well, Bernie, we love you, and we have hope for you, man. And if, if I could have voted, I would have voted for you. So I'm sorry that they dropped old evidence on you. My apologies, bro. I didn't Shout out, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to jump into the interview. Rico Orlando, thank you so much for the entertainment gossip. And, of course, some good news right there. Which is, it was a little bit of half. It was, I'm glad that he is not jeopardizing his life and going out there and catching COVID-19. So that's the good True. news. True. But losing a good guy that could lead the free world, that was that's bad news, man. Because that, that's an excellent guy. I love him. I love him. But Bernie, we wish you luck and we hope we see you again very soon. Is that harsh to say, guys? To say that we hope to yeah. see you again. Yeah, like, <laughs> he has four years that he he has to re- do this all over again. But you know what? Hopefully <laughs> what do you think if like he becomes VP? Do you think Biden it's not would... going to happen. Biden said he's going to pick a woman as VP. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now who I got Michelle my money on. Obama. Nah. Michelle, she is way too smart to be <laughs> in politics. Nah. <laughs> my money, if I had to, if I was a betting person, it's a stretch, but Stacey Abrams. I mm. would put money on Stacey Abrams and then I'd say Kamala for like either attorney general or secretary of state, something like that. Yo, let, me, let, me, let me ask a question, since this is like uh, also a local show, just before we jump into the interview. And each of you guys can answer this before we jump into this interview with Reno, our guest. Um, who would you want to see run the Cayman Islands? Like, who would you want to see be the next premier? Someone that's not, that hasn't been there before. Uh, Honestly, I would probably choose like Rico Rolando. I think he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think I'd choose John Reno Jackson. I think he's an okay guy. <laughs> I don't what know about you, Liz? 
There's so many people. I don't know. In all honesty, there is a person who I've been trying to tell her that sh- I feel like she would do a great job. I'm not gonna say her name because if I do and put do her, it. I can't, do I can't it. put her on the spot. <laughs> she would kill me. Do it. But <laughs> I think she would be like supremely qualified. Um, and I think that people in Cayman should put as much thought and energy into Cayman elections as they as we do in the U.S. elections because yeah, the U.S. Yeah. elections is like entertaining. So I understand yeah. why we pay attention to it, but I feel like we should pay just as much attention to our local elections. Amen, man. I love that. I just want to say that. whoever whoever runs corners it gets my vote because if you can run a business <laughs> that long and food that good that long, you can you get my vote. Yo, so I'm shout out know. whoever owns I'm corners right now. I'm with Reno, and, and Kirky can be the um, Kirky, could, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kirky can be next in line. I'm sorry, Kirky for uh, deputy general or you governor. Know, that man changed his life. He deserves a chance. That's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump into this interview right now, guys. Uh, Reno, man, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Um, I just got to know you recently because of Rico and Goldfire, and just everybody that's always spoke highly about you. But we just want to thank you for being a part of the Homeland Show celebrating culture with us and just like talking to us about your talents and your skills and where you hope to no be problem. in the next couple of years, man. So without further ado, welcome Reno to the show, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Reno, for those, that, for those that don't know you, man, what do you do besides like destroy walls? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, I, uh, I do a bunch of different things, like in terms of the spectrum of art, you know, like I've done photography, uh, I've worked on some of the music video sets that Goldfire's done. Um, you know, I do. Wait, I you? Do. <laughs> what? Did they, which one? Did, I know there was one that. Uh, we did, did you make a mess of the yeah. backdrop? Oh, of I didn't make the mess. The beautiful mess that was in the background. Look, it was like art. But it no, was, we, like, was uh, that you? we all we we all collaborated on that one. But um, the the mess, the actual broken stuff, that wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, man, I, I, in all seriousness, I've seen your work before. You actually did um, live painting at InStyle Runway Show at the Ritz-Carlton. And that was the first time I actually saw you work live. And you were amazing. Even your photography, I've seen it. You have a different I appreciate that. of bringing stuff um, forward in a different way. Like, it kind of has you standing there thinking, like, what is this? It's like one of those art pieces that you want to put up in your house because you kind of feel like it's going to be expensive one day, so you're going <laughs> to rush and buy it. So just, just, just <laughs> yo, me and you, fingers crossed on that one. Huh? Yeah, man, let's let's put that into existence. But like, what made you want to become an artist? Like, when did you first mm-hmm. realize, like, man, I'm this is this is what I want to do. This is what I'm in love with. Um, I don't even know, man. I, I it kind of just, I guess, like that's a good question for any artist. It's like, or anyone that's in a creative field. It's like, how do you even? It's just kind of like you were doing something, and then something just kind of came into it. I mean, unless you, you went to like school for it, but I didn't go to school. So I don't know, I just kind of started like doing it. And I've always been exposed to like creatives. Like my father was a musician and an architect and stuff like that. So it's just always been in my like family to kind of just do stuff creatively. So I guess, I don't know, I just kind of fell into it, you know? Man, uh, when, can I ask you one more question? I know Rico and Liz are gonna ask you some questions too, but. Uh, I always wanted to ask an artist this question. Is it something that you just like, is it something that you can learn, that you can learn to be an artist? And do you think that's something that you really are just born to? That's a gift that you kind of have. No, yeah, 100%. Have it. I, think, I think, honestly, anyone can become an artist. It's just because it's all just about what you're making. And I mean, I think the thing a lot of people get confused about when they start making um, any sort of like physical artwork is that they're like, oh, I want to do this style because I like this style. And they never really try any other type of style, because yeah, like uh, if Rico started singing heavy metal, I don't know. Uh, maybe Rico, you got it in you. I don't know, but you know what I mean. So like, you gotta try everything, and then you just kind of keep going. I think everybody's got creativity in them. So you know? what do you so. think if I did this and I just put like? <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> I love you. But hey, the reason I'm asking because this guy yeah. at um, Art Basel in Miami just like mm-hmm. created a white blank sheet and a banana. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. for like millions. Yeah, you were there for that, correct? Yeah. So art, do you think art is, is just one of those things? It's like, man, it's what you see. It's what it's what you love, and if you spend yeah. time on it, you design it. It's one of those things that 
it's yeah, and it's of art. It is like with the banana thing. It's also a bit of humor too, because that guy, all of his work he's ever made, um, uh, was Mauricio Catalan. All of his work he's ever made is like weird, like tongue in cheek, kind of like making fun of the viewer kind of stuff. Like he never makes work that serious. Like he made a a solid uh, twenty four karat gold uh, toilet, and uh, that was it. Like he just made people use it or whatever. And like I don't know, it's just stuff like that. Like I think that anything is possible, but it's just within the bounds of are you like you know like if, if you take it seriously i think that's all that really matters yeah, like if you yeah. if you if you feel the passion coming out of the person that's it oh man i love that i love that what do you guys think yeah what's your <laughs> <laughs> i mean, I, mean I don't know if i'm into the banana painting no. <laughs> like i get it it's humorous but like yeah. mm. <laughs> <laughs> how much money you know how much money they made off of that banana that's what i'm saying like look that it sold a... for like a lot. It's all for a lot for a banana. I think it was, and I was just, millions. Yeah. It was millions because they sold five of them or something like that. Yeah. It was and millions, I respect man. artists. I 100% respect artists. And I was like, this, this yeah. feels a little. <laughs> yeah. It was a little like what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh -huh. a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a science behind it. Like basically what's going to happen is, is that whoever bought the certificate saying they own the banana now they're going to take that certificate to museums and have shows that bring in money to the museums. So museums know if they own that certificate to have the banana, people will come to take pictures with the banana. So it's like a business. It's, it's, that's where, yeah, that goes back to what we were saying. Like, is it just about being like, oh, I'm uh, expressing yourself or is it kind of like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Cause like, I don't know. It's just a weird art. Art don't yeah. make no sense. Uh, what, what do you what do you do like what does your daily routine look like because you know one minute i see you grilling at tilly's like you're cooking like steak <laughs> up and i'm like yo rena do you work there and you're like no i just show up nope. sometimes and cook steak and then, yeah. you're, then you're painting then you're 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 at a yeah. gallery helping like what what do you what's your like what's your day-to-day -day routine like i know covid um, has changed that obviously but, oh yeah man COVID's messed everything up. I mean, uh, it, well, kind of not really. Now I've started doing like this daily sketch thing where I just kind of get people to send in photos and I just kind of do like a 10 minute sketch. And some people are like, yo, man, that doesn't even look like me, bro. And I'm like, it, it's, 10, it's 10 minutes. I'm not, I'm just going like this, literally. So, um, but that's something I've had to try to figure out what to do because like you said, COVID has just made like everything because I had all kinds of things planned. Like you said, like I always like to do random things, you know. Um, and the way I make my work is I always do these different things in order to kind of um, find inspiration for the next thing. So like cooking, guest cooking. I don't even know how that came about really. I just went there one day. Well, I've been going there for a while, but um, he was like, yo, I need some help in the kitchen. And I was like, whatever, like I know how to cook, you know? Wow. So I just pull up, I pull up and cook for fun. And he was like, oh man, you know, like, so we just doing barbecue and stuff. And um, I don't know, it's just, I find enjoyment in just doing things like a lot of different things. So, and it also just helps me meet people and um, kind of just add to like, just like, cause a lot of my work is based like in subconscious thought. So like having all of these memories and ideas and things that you've done kind of play into the work or that's the idea. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. So how, you know, like before, um, this whole thing that happened with COVID-19. I know that you were doing some traveling. Tell us a little bit about that and like the places that you, you got to travel to. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Um, okay. I kind of forgot because I've been here for like a month in quarantine kind of. Like, because I came back from the UK so I spent two weeks in quarantine and I totally forgot about like my trip so far because it's, man, the Europe, first, let me before I answer, the Europe is just crazy right now. Like mm -hmm. straight up, like everybody's lost, like, because it, it's serious, you know, like what, how do you function in a big city? Imagine function like barely functioning in Cayman. So um, when I got to the UK, man, everything had just gone like, like it was intense. So I got back here and then the whole quarantine bus thing and whatever. But yeah, I was in Portugal for a month and um, yeah, I went over there for a residency program and it was this little town outside of Lisbon called Barreiro or something. I still can't say it because Portuguese, first of all, Portuguese is like the hardest language to learn ever. That's it. Like, I don't even know how to explain that. But um, it was an amazing experience. I met all these European artists. Everyone had gone to university except for me. So I just fed off of that, their, their knowledge. And, um, you know, it was just, it was great. I highly recommend um, 
any local artist to, instead of going to university, maybe look into residence programs and then decide university because it's cheaper. You know, uh, that I think it was like a few thousand dollars as opposed to like 20, 30 grand in American university. So it was fun. I mean, I got to eat like $3. That really gives you the like <laughs> and that's that's like a super dope um viewpoint as well because i know most of the time it's our parents choosing for us like what college um degree do yeah. you want to get in it's not necessarily something that you want to do and then by the time like you're too deep in it you're 80 percent finished and you're like wow this is something i really don't want to do so yeah that's exactly. definitely a cool for um for people who are you know doing art and stuff like that yeah, yeah no I, it, I think it's definitely good for people to try the cheaper option i mean for me, like I never finished high school or anything either. So like um, doing the cheapest possible route and then like like doing like certificates or, or um, trainings or whatever, and maybe going to, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but go to UCCI first because you go there for two years then you're, and you get a scholarship to the university that you want to go to. Boom, it's now uh, two years and you only pay, you know, whatever. But most people will go, oh, no, I won't go states, but I won't be, you know, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. you gotta you gotta there's there's a way to not spend money and spending not spending money is important so what, why didn't you go ahead Liz at, at the risk of sounding like mama Liz right now <laughs> um I will say because you you're talking about you know getting a placement in a residence program mm -hmm. as though it's not an incredible achievement like as oh. though it's just a very normal thing and I know as a filmmaker, getting placement in those residence programs are, mm -hmm. they're tasks to be done. And so for a lot of people, they won't have even the skills necessary to be competitive for those programs unless they've like gone through and studied and been in university for a while, or they've been dedicated like you have True. in like a real stringent way to their work. So congrats to you on that. Um, <laughs> and and and, no, that's a and good going point. yeah that's a good and point. going going off of that i do i want to i want to ask you because mm -hmm. so you're saying okay i didn't finish school and i didn't go to university to learn this but mm -hmm. you had to start somewhere and so what mm -hmm. i want to know is what was the first art form that you started with and mm -hmm. what was that first experience that you remember where you were like okay let me do it was it in elementary school when they were like it's art time in <laughs> class or like just at yeah. home finger painting uh no i mean i'd always done art from like the all of my school system stuff like even i had teachers who were like oh maybe you should do art but then i had teachers at the same time who were like don't do art 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 makes no money go to finance do focus in math get you know so um even as a I child always, like as a like yeah. as a child yeah that's like a k-man thing people just know that like they, there's a there's a stiflement on creativity like if you like music or if you like writing or you like whatever they're gonna try and push you to that bank job so, yeah, I, I feel like that usually happens towards like later in high school. So it'd be, it's interesting to me that you could have been a kid, like a literal mm -hmm. kid, and someone said that to you. Well, I mean, that yeah. I just, it's happened to me. I, I, when yeah. I went to Triple C, I, I'm about to like, when I went to Triple oh, C, no! I, no, 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 I went to Triple C and um, I'm, born on, I'm born on Halloween, right? So I went to Triple C <laughs> and these people, they, they wouldn't let me have a birthday party because they said I was born on the devil's birthday. Oh, wow. I Shout apologize out. on behalf of Triple C, <laughs> on behalf of my alma mater. I apologize. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can take that out if you want, but... <laughs> I think most people, you know, it is, it is very, like, most people, or most parents do try to force you to get a bank job. And I think the days are changing where, you know, we're becoming parents and we're telling our True. kids, you know, do whatever you want. If you want to color on the wall and... and figure it out what kind of painting that is to you, you keep doing you. I think it's just all about the generation before us that were really like, I guess their parents were telling us the only reason you're going to get successful is if you get this bank job or if you True. go into finance or any anything like that. So it's, I, I would agree with you on that term as well, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I agree too. I think it is changing. I think it is changing. So I what was I, that first art form that you- like, Oh, the first, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, I kind of just started doing like performance art, but like I didn't even know it was performance art. So I would just kind of like, I tell all my friends come meet me out in like some bush and we would just like break stuff for fun. And one of my friends would just film it. And we just, I would just save the video and just that was it. Like I didn't even know what that that was art. 
I mean, I, I did try to go to university, which is, um, I went to the school in London for about six months. And then I got into uh, University of Edinburgh. And I was just like, nah, I don't want to go to school. So um, it just wasn't for me. I mean, I guess some people might get it, but I, I just, to me, it just never fit. So um, that's where I started to learn about all these things. I was like, wow, I've been doing performance art for like three years. So I don't know. It's kind of- I don't know, man. It, I feel like there's a different world <clears throat> that when people say what you just said, they kind of like, well, who, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> let me stay far away. But then I kind of feel like, a lot of creative individuals just get it. They get it very quick and, and you put them in this box and you know, they just want mm -hmm. to kick the front door open. I've always told people that, like you have to realize that, you know, school, um, I think, and, and Liz can help me to elaborate on this because she's, she's been in school for a while and mm -hmm. doing really good, but I feel like school puts you in the box and, and a lot of True. artists, they live outside of the box. So it's that hard for you, for you to contain them. And, I, and I'm not saying that about all schools. I don't want to, I don't want to point fingers at all schools. I'm just saying that from, from what I hear from people, like it, it puts you in this like box. And every time I deal with a creative person, they're like, man, I just don't like that. That's, that ruins my creativity. That mess with my mood. Like, and, and we're, and we're different. Like when I work in radio and, and I've been blessed to work in radio and a corporate field and the way that, we get treated in the radio industry versus the corporate industry is completely mm -hmm. different. Like completely, like mm -hmm. you can't sit down in an HR meeting and have the same discussion that you're going to have in a corporate meeting in the radio station. It's completely different, man. So, wow. um, I don't know. I, I, I really felt your energy when you just said what you said about like, you know, school just wasn't for me when you found out where it was actually, it, it contains you in some ways, which is not good for an artist. Yeah, that's well, that's what I felt. I just felt like I was going to go there and, you know, lose the plot of, you know, what was I what was I going to go there and do? You know, like, I don't know. It's just because there's so many. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I never school. Reno, Jack, John Reno. Not a thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and school is made for a lot of people. So we want to put it that is. message out there. Like, it it's, it's just it's. It's not for everyone. I don't know, Liz, sure. what do you want to say about that? I mean, yeah. it, it yeah. absolutely can put you in a box, 100%. Um, and I think clearly, like, you you were clearly excellent. <laughs> That's just what it is. Like, you were clearly excellent. And so my only hesitation is that I don't want to downplay your achievements, right? Because... Yeah. For some people, school is the only way that they yeah. will then get the opportunity oh, yeah. to 100%. be in the kind of program that you were in. That's the yeah. only thing. It's, it's, yeah, a, it's, a, it's a vehicle. No, yeah. I agree. Some, some people might not have got the opportunity if they had not had the education background on their resume right. or something. Yeah. And I agree with that. Um, but like that, you know, like I, I, I do think, people, okay, I guess my message is if, if, it, if, if it works, do it. And if it doesn't work, don't do it. That's okay, great. There we go. There yes. we go. Yes. All right, man. With eight minutes winding down on the clock, we want to thank Reno for joining us. John Reno, our guy forever on the Homeland Show. And he gave some gems today. What I want to do is just kind of like go around to everyone and just drop that 30-second gem on just a, like, you know, basically a wrap-up on giving your last thoughts on the show. Uh, we'll start with, you know, we want to be nice to Liz. Uh, especially because you had a stressful day. You just want to treat, we want to make women first. You know, put women first. All right, so why don't you go ahead and live. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I think I'll probably just echo your last note, um, Reno. I'll, I'll just say, you know, it, for each person, you have to figure out what works for you and if it works for you, do it. And if it doesn't work for you, get out and go to the place that's going to cause you to be the best version of yourself. There we go. That's, that's my last sentence. Yeah, that's, yeah. What about you, Rico? Um, yeah, definitely. I actually had one more question for Reno because I know it, it must have been crucial um, for networking for you, especially when you were traveling and stuff like that. And I remember a, a couple of months back, Reno actually invited me to this um, dinner that they were having at Tilly's. And I was like, what is this? And he's like, you know what? Just come. It's going to be super creative. 
just show up with you and, and Vasco and Theodore and you guys show up. And if we get there, it's like a super dope Halloween party, but then all of the people are like extremely dope. Like they're like editors of Vogue and they're creators at Louis Vuitton and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what is this that Reno inviting me to like, I feel like this is not, I'm not at the level where I'm supposed to be around these people yet. So how do you really like get in the room with all these people and then create that friendship that makes you able to like travel overseas and stuff like that? Well, first of all, I think anybody can hang out with anybody. I think everybody is at, the, I think you're at that level, Dane's at that level, Elizabeth. Yo, he everybody. dropped a gem. He just, everybody his, he just wrapped the show up. Wrap yeah. show up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I got, I got lucky just to be around them. And um, whenever I see like an opportunity, I just try to like be uh, thankful for what I'm around. So, I mean, it's just good vibes, good vibes. That's it. I don't know. I don't even know how the hell I got invited to that party, <laughs> to be honest with you. So, you know, oh, it's just that. Good, good energy. I always, I always been told, and I would leave on this mark, because um, you just you just finished what I was going to wrap up with saying. I, didn't, I, I was literally going to steal yours, but you just said it. Like, you know, sometimes, um, you know, God puts you around people to show you how your future is going to look. And you just got to accept it. It's not by accident. It's intentional. So sometimes he'll put you yeah. around people that you don't think you deserve to be in the same room. And he's like, yo, I'm just giving you a look at your future. And by the way, I hope you use this to empower me. And, exactly. and that's, that's just that's just what it is. And Reno, man, that was, man, I couldn't say any better. Thank you so much, Rico, for asking that question because you just made a lot of people just felt really good after watching this interview because you said it right. Anybody deserves to be in that room because if you're in there, you're in there for a reason. Um, yeah, True. so we appreciate you, man. I think we that that's it for the interview. We we, we hope to get <laughs> you again. Um, we love this interview, man. Thank you for being a part of the Homeland Daily Show, and uh, we we'll hope to see you soon again. Yeah, no problem. Cheers.